Want a bit of writer's heresy? Just say writer's block doesn't exist at the next meeting you attend. Truly, that's a fact. We can always write something. The situation we call writer's block is actually more simple and yet more terrifying than the words themselves. We make the claim that writer's block doesn't exist because prose work through any stoppages in their writing. Yet we still have stoppages, not blocks. Yet at some point, a high and thick concrete wall will build itself in the build itself in the middle of our writing road. It's writer's in Ursha. How do we overcome this monstrous wall? Maybe this episode can help. Welcome to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, headed up by M.A. Lee with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Runes, all from Writer's Books. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Show notes for this and other episodes can be found on therightfocus.blogspot.com. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com. Our podcast episodes last as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, drive a short commute, a short commute or take a brisk walk. M.A. Lee is currently offering her novella, The Lion's Den, as a freebie when you sign up for her newsletter. Write to winkbooks at aol.com and ask to join to get the link and the free novella and then the current newsletter. As for today, we're bookcasting the copyright 2017, revised 2018. In this episode, we tackle the final bugbear of every writer. Only we have a problem. There's no such thing as writer's block. That's the claim of Think Like a Pro, One Simple Injunction, Chapter 5. We've looked at writer's refusal and writer's and writer's procrastination. We even had a three-question quiz and offered multiple solutions to both problems. Worse than refusal and procrastination is writer's inertia. That's the real monster, an ogre dragging a huge mace along to bash in our brains. In brains. Inertia is the most insidious form of the so-called writer's block. This is one true monster, a slummy monster of stagnation. Inertia is the tendency to do nothing, the tendency to remain unchanged. Oh, those two types of inertia? These are the real bad several, several dark years in William Ernest Tenley's Clutch of Circumstance and the Bludgeonings of Chance. About nine years before I set off on my journey to publication, I found myself wallowing in the slime of writer's inertia. I talked about my journey to publication in the introductory episode, the writing episode, the writing of Think Like a Pro. That was about 14 years before it. I did didn't land in inertia by choice. Part of it was depression from an overwhelming obligation for which I could see no way out. Part of it was issues with my thyroid. A third part of my inertia was a general hopelessness about writing. The road to publication through traditional publishing houses seemed closed. I've written stories of some type since fourth grade. If I'm not writing bits and pieces that could turn into a story, I'm not happy. And the wallowing world of inertia plopped me down into poisonous green slime. I could loved ones who threw me a rope. I clutched at that lifeline and started pulling myself out. Getting my thyroid straightened out fixed some of the inertia. The overwhelming obligation, however, wasn't going to lift anytime soon. To escape it, rather than plop myself before the TV for yet more mindlessness, I re- before the TV for yet more mindlessness, I returned to writing. Before I knew it, my nightly hour-long scribbles were turning into a story. Thank you, God. I finished that novel and started another one. I had no dream of publication. I had given up, remember? My obligations became easier to deal with, but it Five more years before the leech of inertia started sucking at my creative energies. Here are four healthy habits that can lift away lethargy and the doldrums. First, get sunshine. Get outside for 30 minutes per day. If it's cloudy, stay outside an extra 15 minutes. In deep winter, increase that amount of time or take a vitamin D plus K supplement. Give the supplement time to work. The sunshine will have an effect within three days. Real sunshine is always better than a supplement. But if it's deep winter and you're in a northern latitude, get that D with K supplement. Getting your 30 minutes yet seeing no change? Your sugar intake. Remember that starches, but 
Potatoes, rice, pasta, and breads convert rapidly to sugar. Sugar gives a one-hour high, then dumps you for four hours at minimum. Artificial and lab-made sugar is worse than cane sugar. At all costs, avoid high fructose corn syrup and the artificial sweet fructose corn syrup and the artificial sweeteners that raise blood sugar. And they all raise blood sugar. Don't believe the hype. You can have sugar, but you don't need to have it at every meal. And you don't need to snack. Got sunshine? Cut sugar? After a week, still no change? Third, check your water intake. 64 ounces minimum. Make sure you drink filtered water. Pick one of the non-fluoridated forms, osmosis filtered, or distilled, or spring water. I find water with electrolytes best of all. Notice, no carbonation, no energy drinks, no sugar, no fillers, or other additives. Do not count your cup of coffee at breakfast, or lunch, or your glass of wine at dinner. 64 ounces of water is in addition to these other drinks. If you need to flavor your water, then use organic citrus or other fruits. The grated rind and slices of an organic lemon with filtered water poured over, this should be your go-to refreshment throughout the day. Mint tea is also, also good and wonderfully warming during cold weather. See that word refreshment? That's the point. Not a sugar high. Not a sugar incentive. Not a surge. Not bland. Water with citrus or mint recharges you steadily. Pay attention to your intake of water. Quality matters. Quantity matters. You drink 32 ounces, a quart or a liter, within an hour of waking up. You've gotten dehydrated while you slept. You should try for another pint, 16 ounces by noon. Another pint by dinner leaves you with an extra cup or two before you go to sleep and you're over your requirement, which is always good. Yes, your bladder will send you running next week or so, but eventually it will learn the new schedule. Curiously enough, your body will realize hydration is now a regular thing and not hold on to water at the cellular level. Drinking water when you don't feel well is hard. Drinking water when it's cold is hard. Keep at it. Fourth healthy habit, walk for 30 minutes, slow, is even more detrimental than exercise exhaustion. Work 25 sitting, break 10 for movement, repeat. Set a timer to keep you on track. Movement is good for your body. If your back or neck has been bothering you, then moving your legs will work out those kinks. If you feel a little swollen or bloated or stuffed, the movement, if you feel a little swollen or bloated or stuffed, the movement will move on out. Movement energizes the brain. Exhaustion doesn't. Don't push and push and push past endurance. You're not helping your body with such behavior. We are designed for movement, steady walking, with occasional bursts of speed or energy to wear you out. But gradually, the exercise gives you additional energy. You will need to walk on four opportunities at a steady 30 minutes before your body resets, so you need to give this one a week. The wrong diet causes brain fog and sluggish memory. Fire that brain up with sun and water and exercise. Exercise and don't exercise and don't dumb it down with sugar and the so-called writer's block from diet and life-induced depression will dissipate. Diet and life-induced depression is not clinical depression which is caused by brain chemicals misfiring. This is not doldrums. Three signs of clinical depression and I'm not a doctor are hopeless and worthless. These feelings never lift on their own. If you lack the energy even to think about making changes, if you feel the shadow of doom constantly hanging over you, and if you think no one cares for you and nothing matters in your life, you are wrong. Please get some kind of help. You matter. Even if I don't, you matter. Even if I don't know you, I will tell you that you matter. Everyone who is here on earth has a purpose in life, and you have a fulfilling purpose that will make you happy. You just need to find it. Remaining unchanged is the slime of stagnation. Our world is one of constant change. The seasons, the day intended to change. Without it, we become stagnant. Without it, we can't shine. Some may say the writing waits on inspiration. You never wait on inspiration. Inspiration waits on you. It's ready to pour out at the opportune moment. And if you aren't actively seeking it, that opportune moment for inspiration will fly past that opportune 
opportune moment for inspiration will fly past. Accept challenges. They help our minds to grow. Accept trials and grief. They help our souls to grow. As Clarissa Pinkola Estes says in her Women Who Run With the Wolves, Without Death, There Is No Dark for the diamond to shine from, seek all about change. Change is all about improvement. Cast the net back into the world with a little worm of what if on the end. Break the mold of the same old, same old. Write new things. Try new things. Visit museums. These are artists at work. Even if you don't like their paintings. Even if you artist at work. Even if you don't like their paintings. Even if you can't understand what the artist is trying to convey. Study the composition. Look at how the colors are put together. Look at the shapes chosen and how the shapes are placed. Is the dominant image centered or off to one side? Which side? What individual foreground? What is in the background? Study the sculptures. Most of them will be modern. What is the artist trying to say? Why did she or he pick that form? While driving down a street, look at the buildings. How are they distinguished from the others? Is it the paint alone or are there differences in the brick construction? What old buildings alone or are there differences in the brick construction? What old buildings need to be revived? What brand new buildings need to be razed? Why? Why? That question helps drive the stagnation in great circles that eventually will make it clear. Take a hike. Leave the mall and walk through a park. Go to a browse through the flowers and trees and learn more than the names of the ones that appeal to you. Introduce yourself to the infinite variety of trees and shrubs and flowers, perennials and annuals. Go to a symphony or listen to one. Pick something you would not usually like. Read the liner notes before you listen. Pay attention to the musicians working, to working together to create this music. Consider the style, the use of volume. Watch the conductor and her or his use of energy while directing. Go to a local theater. Stroll through a gallery. Visit a little shop. You don't have to buy. Spend 30 minutes there rather than in front of the TV or buried in your phone. Learn the names. That's a robin hopping along. A chickadee swooping, a little wren putting all the effort in his tiny body to sing the loudest song in your backyard. Learn new things constantly. Try new things constantly. Go to new local paces. Stretch out and think why. Why is it this way? Why do I like it? Why don't I like it? I like it. How would I change? Now, I'm going to add info to this chapter on this podcast. It's like bonus content. I've done this with other chapters such as Kishotenketsu in the five part plotting episodes and others. I didn't add this in the book Think Like a Pro because this information repeats the points of chapters of chapters 1 and 2. Yet chapters 1 and 2 were 3 months ago. I will be brief, I promise. The list of activities above to re-inspire you can be construed as distractions from writing, yet they keep our brain alive and thriving. Here's the problem with distractions and inertia and depression and depression and running several projects at once. With distractions and disruptions and multiple projects, we can think our writing is advancing, but we may just be keeping busy without having progress. We're spinning our wheels, lots of motor and revving of engines, but no way to judge our traction, traction unless we have a means to measure. That's also the problem with inertia. Our brains are fogged. We may not realize how we're missing our goals until weeks and months have passed. I know, this happened to me. After my mother's death, I had a hard time concentrating on anything beyond my daily job. Ain't frying and creativity sucking. I didn't realize how many writing opportunities that I missed until I totaled up my writing days at year's end. Then, four years later in 2012, changes at my workplace were so brain-sucking and creativity-draining that I only recorded writing sessions for 21 days for the entire year. I once thought tracking days was useless. However, a review of my tracking is eye-opening. 2012's lack of days gave me new impetus for 2013. I count 2013 as my new advent year because I started actively pursuing writing full writing full time as a goal. I staggered through 2013. I still had those issues in the workplace, those brain sucking and creativity draining issues that tried to control my life outside of the work hours. 2014 and every year after shows my devotion became to my writing. 
track to my writing. Tracking days helped me realize the days I was losing. When I look back at 2008, I know that's the year I lost my mother. I can look at 2016 and see how I persevered even though my workplace was becoming more horrific than even 2012 and 2013, which helped make my decision, make my decision to leave. The fall of 2016 was just as bad as 2012 and 2013 combined. Without tracking my writing sessions, I wouldn't know this. My goal is nulla die sine linea, daily writing. Yet that's not really entirely possible. Some days, it's just not going to happen. Writing sessions, we don't begrudge those lost days because we are pursuing regularly and reaching our writing goals. And we can plan for that time away when we are conscious of what we need to do. We can even plan to have our daily writing when we don't expect to have that day. What I've learned about tracking drove what I've learned about tracking drove me to create my own weekly template, which, when I shared it with others, compelled them to say they wish the template was in planner form. So I created the Think Pro Planner. You can see images on pages of Writers Inc. nonfiction. I'll put a link in the show notes. We can track our days, our writings enough to help us think we are progressing. At some point, we need to add in word count. Days and words create a better understanding of our progression toward goals. We shouldn't count a writing session if all we did was stare at the blank screen. We should count time we spend on a business plan or marketing, even reasons some people count hours. A combination of the two, days and words, or hours and words, or hours and days. As long as we progress, that should be what we track. Remember, we're going pro. Remember deadlines. Remember our mantra, nulla die sine linea. Now add this injunction. Mantra, nulla die sine linea. Now add this injunction. Writer's block doesn't exist. Never say or write or think writer's block again. Be a three-souled writer. Heed your heart's desire. Apply your gut to the work. Think through problems to defeat them. What escape do you need to plan plan for? That will help you get past refusal. What fear do you need to cast out? That will help you pass procrastination. And what change do you need to seek out? What will freshen you and keep you going way past inertia? Ask these three questions and get back to writing. Thank you for listening to our podcast, The Right Foot. To Chapter 6, One Slice of Advice. Let it sleep. We're nearing the end of Think Like a Pro. Chapter 6 is about creativity and letting the subconscious have time to do its creative work on our writing. Join us every Wednesday for a new episode. Until then, discover ways to check on your writing's progression and and then write on. Want a bit of writer's heresy? Just say writer's block doesn't exist at the next meeting you attend. Truly, that's a fact. We can always write something. The situation we call writer's block is actually more simple and yet more.